you know, they made me an offer. There was a lot of alignment between what the depart- where the department was interested in moving and what my area was. So, what, where else did you think of going, or where else were you recruited? So there? I applied. I apl- I ended up doing sixteen in- uh, interviews. All right, starting. So it turned out the University of Iowa had a program working in exactly the same area I was working in. So they called me really early. That was one of the first places I went. Um, they called you. They it? called okay. me. Uh-huh. They called me and said, please apply for this position. Um, uh, University of Wisconsin, which I think we, very strong computer science department. We almost ended up there. Uh, USC down in Southern California. Um, oh, Ohio State, a few other places around. Uh, Brown. Um, but by the t- Stanford, because we're on quarter system, our search process tends to be a little later than everybody else's. So by the time I got to Stanford, I had given my job talk. I had, had it really <laughs> well rehearsed. I had given it so many times. So I really, it was really well polished and I could really deliver it well. And that probably helped. I sure it did. But look, 16, you actually did 16 jobs. I think job or 14, interviews? yeah, 14, 16. You on site and different? I learned a lot about what people were doing in these, yeah. Yeah. But why, why would anybody do that many interviews if you were fairly confident you were going to get a good job? In? Well, I didn't know. You know, it was, uh, it was uh, I mean, computer science was, and, and the computing field was just really going through this turning point and really growing and beginning to hire faculty faster than they were being, than, than young PhDs were being produced. But there was a lot of it was unclear, you know, what would happen and how and uh, how it would be received and things like that. So, so was there the, the computer science department existed at that time in the School of Humanities and Sciences? In the School of Humanities and Sciences. But you didn't talk to them. I interviewed actually uh, uh, with several faculty, including with including with uh, Don Knuth at the time, the sort of uh, legendary not only Stanford faculty member but legendary hero in the field. Um, so I did. I interviewed with several of the faculty in, in computer science as well as the double E faculty that were computing oriented. So uh, Don Knuth also received the Turing Award, if I'm he not did. mistaken. He did. And, and some other Stanford computer science, Ed Feigenbaum. John McCarthy, Ed John Feigenbaum. McCarthy. And if I, memory serves me, uh, Don Knuth won it in 1974. I think that's so about that's right. So that's just a little bit before you showed up here. Yeah. Was that, he was, was a legend. That? He was already a he legend. was already a legend. His books, in fact, when when Dave Patterson and I wrote our book, uh, Don's book was the model for how a book could help shape a field and steer a field. And in fact, several of the things like how we rate exercises, how much work they're going to do, are taken directly from Don's uh, uh, uh. Don's notion of how to do it. So again, the local folklore has it that your interaction with him or interview with him when you came out here as a prospective employee. Uh, had some tremendously deep effect on you. So you want you want to tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, it, it did. It did. So I asked him how he had been so productive and how he got so much work done. And he said he said two things. First of all, he expressed a passion for what he does, uh, obviously. But he says I don't watch TV, <laughs> <laughs> and that stuck with me. That stuck with me. That 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 kind of love of what you do, which causes you to do it. And, you, know, you, you need to get paid enough to live, but it, you, you do it because you love it. Yeah. And it really came across in, in Don's case quite strongly. And he's a very understated I- individual, very modest, um, despite his, his accomplishments. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Was, other than not watching TV, was there one, any other kind of memorable line that so stuck he with you? Thinks, you know, he thinks really deeply about things and really works it through and he says, you know, he, he said, I, I, I try to take complicated ideas and help people understand how they all come mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. and I work it through in my own mind. Um, he's also a great writer, so all those things kind of played together in doing it. In fact, many years later, we had an interesting interaction because he was rewriting his legendary textbook and, and changing the language he used based on the work that Dave Patterson and I had done. So he went back and read my book, which is not his field at all, and discovered an error in the book that had been in there for more than five years. Uh, and nobody else had ever seen it. And this is a complicated equation, logical formula that you 
to work through that there's something wrong in this requires a degree of concentration and focus, which yeah. is absolutely yeah. amazing. <laughs> and no one else who'd read the book and, Nobody else and, had found and, and applied Nobody else that had equation. Discovered it. Well, it's a very, you have to, it's a logical equation. So you have to really think through all the possible cases. And he had, he had found it, but nobody else had ever found it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Stanford all the way once you talked to Don? And- yeah, once we interviewed here, and I think uh, Andre had come out, we had visited, we loved California, it was beautiful. Um, you know, when we got back, I got the phone call from uh, um, the person who was then head of this uh, joint laboratory, um, Mike Flynn, um, <clears throat> who would be my mentor once I got here. Um, and he made me the offer, and we decided right away. Okay. okay, okay. And no, nobody else tried to counteroffer? Or? No. In fact, the Stanford, I always still remember this day, it was not the best offer. <laughs> so <laughs> considering the cost of living, I mean, you'd think, yeah, I had, I had higher offers, but I wanted to go where the very best people were going yeah. and the best work was going on. When I came here, about, just about exactly a decade ahead of you, I showed up here in 67 on the yeah. faculty. And among the things that I was told by my mentors uh, at Yale, where I was in graduate school, was that the, the West Coast University, Stanford in particular, are the, have the Avis mentality. We try harder yeah. because we're number we two. We did, we did. And there was more energy and ambition out here than there was in some of the more complacent places back east. Yeah. Was it, did you feel that at all? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, we, used to, we used to joke among ourselves when you arrive at Stanford, what you get is a hunting license. Yeah. Uh, now go out and get the resources you need to build your program and things like that. And you know, we got relatively modest. I mean, I think we, we got a, a terminal. That was it. That was our startup package, a terminal. <laughs> um, so there was very much. Now, some of the senior faculty would help um, provide some research money for the junior faculty. Because in engineering, without research dollars, you can't get graduate students and the whole thing, you can't run a research program, especially for, I'm an experimental computer scientist. You can't run an experimental program, for sure. Um, and the senior faculty helped Mike Flynn, Jim Mindel, several of the senior faculty helped get some research funding for the younger faculty so they could at least get started and then begin to submit their own proposals. <laughs>